Hello, everyone, BTC family. It is Michelle O'Connor, Ulta Beauty Pro Team member, as well as Artistic Director for The Matrix Brand. I am so excited to be here, first of all, and share with you some great tips and tricks on editorial styling as it pertains to textured hair. I think a lot of us this year and last year have spent so much time like upping the ante on our texture hair knowledge and really trying to get a handle on the basics from curl charting to styling techniques to coloring techniques that I thought that I would bring it home and really give you a peek into my mind and in my world and get you start thinking about next steps. You know, when we think about next steps in terms of this love affair that we are having with textured hair, uh, I think of how do we take that up a notch, you know, um, as working, um, working as an Ulta Beauty Pro Team member, I, I get the opportunity and the privilege to work on things in an editorial capacity quite often. And as well as my background with Naha and shooting for competitions and, and even for the One Shot Awards, you know, so it's really about trying to find this great space of being able to have things that are consumer friendly but also when you need to take it up a notch because you wanna stand out on social media or you wanna enter your hair into competitions or you want to really go into that next level and do editorial work, this is the place for you. So I have so many things and I think I'm guilty of trying to give away and just share everything with you guys. So I'm gonna to try to condense this and keep this in a format that's not ADD so that you can really pick up some great tips and have them be applicable to what you're currently doing. So one of the things I want to point out is this model here, right? So she's a texture mannequin. Um, we've all probably played around with a lot of them and you see that there's a feature. Um, on my advertisement for this class, it was one of my collections that had a braided feature. And that braided feature really set on the profile because when we think about areas that we'd like to photograph, I knew that I wanted my model to be profile and I knew that I wanted the accent and the focal point to be on that pinwheel braided. Here, we see that the accent is now changed. So one of the things that I like to encourage you guys is to make sure that you're uh, collecting on your arsenal of techniques that you learn you know, obviously at BTC, there are so many classes and so many things that you guys can learn to kind of pack in your toolkit for things that you know how to do. Nobody has to be a braiding expert. Nobody has to be a color expert. Like you, you, but you do need to know some semblance of all of it. And practice makes perfect, you know? So I, for me, I, I don't consider myself a braider. However, I can look at something and I can sort of uh, figure out how it was done and uh, perform it with a level of, of excellence because you want your work to reflect the love that you put into it. So this is a, a zigzag pattern on the sides. It wasn't all over. It did take me a very, very long time. What took the most out of this was really just the parting, right? If you learn anything about the act of cornrowing hair, which is really just a, a Dutch braid, right? It's like a, it's an inside out French braid. So it's three dimensional, which I like because when I work with texture, it's, it's my favorite medium is hair that has some type of pattern. If it doesn't have a pattern, I usually put it in there. So if the hair is straight, I'm usually crimping it or I'm curling it or I'm creating some type of zigzag rick racking on the hair. And so that's just sort of my signature. I'm always playing around with patterns in hair. So patterns don't only end with what the hair is actually feeling like, it's also what you put in the hair. One of the things to make note of is what do you want to see in hair that is patterned or textured, right? So we know that there's a lot of movement and a lot of um, uh, shape and form in the interior of this hair. We can look at this hair that I brushed out, right? So I just brushed this out. Her hair would have looked very much like mine, right? So this is the hair, my what my hair would look like once I brush it out. So I wanna see 
two sort of concepts living beside each other. I love the fact that this is very sleek and very tapered, but I don't want the overall feel of this look to be very sculpted and tapered. I want to add a billowy, softer sort of contradiction to this sculpted feel that you see here on the top. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue to make this sort of crown area sleek, but I want also height because notice that she's very flat and she has expansion on the sides, but there's no height. So how do we get height, right? I position this braid to land right here at the, like really right below, right behind the high point, the high point being right here and just the slope, right? So I know that if I gather my sides, right? And I'm going to just, from this is really going to be like right behind the ear and that's where I stopped my braiding pattern. So I'm gonna just go right in and continue on with that part line, right? So that will be what I pick up. But before I do that, I want to downgrade this texture a little bit more. So even though she was brushed out, I don't want there to be any impressions in the hair. I really just want it very, very diffused. So almost like what this root area looks like. So I'm gonna go in with my dryer and my, uh, my concentrator nozzle and a paddle brush, right? You can use a paddle brush. A paddle brush is always going to leave probably the most texture. If I were going to go in with something like a Denman brush, that's going to pull and give me more tension. Therefore, it's going to make it more straight, which is going to make it flatter. I want an explosion. I want like fluff. I want a natural padding that you would get from textured hair. So I'm going to go in with my paddle brush that will allow more hair to run through these bristles without becoming very, very straight. So I'm going to spray a little bit of Miracle Creator in the hair because you never just want to start blow drying hair from a dry state, right? Especially texture, it's all about protecting that hair. So I'm not saturating it. I'm just giving a little bit of moisture back into the hair, right? So I'm not going to divide it too thin. I'm just going to maybe part this off in two. And understand that you always have a couple of different ways that you can stretch textured hair, right? And another way that you could do this, because I always like to give you more than, there's always more than one way to do something, right? So all I'm doing is going right through the hair. I am not looking for a perfectly straight texture at all. I'm just looking to remove the indentations and I'm going right to my next section. Make sure that your section is detangled before you rake the brush through as because when you are doing that, if you have tangles that you've moved down, you'll never be able to get the brush through. So work smarter, not harder, just detangle, spend a little bit of time detangling that before. So again, it's about removing the indentations from hair that is naturally curly and just creating this space between curly and straight. And that space between curly and straight is frizzy, right? So we, we often times think of the texture of frizz as being a bad thing. But I want you all to reimagine now in this new world, this new lovely world of texture, that frizz is not always a bad thing. There is such a thing as intentional frizz. So if I put it there, I meant to do that. You guys ever play around and <laughs> you know, not mean to do something and say I meant to do that. Well, in this case, I meant to do that, right? So I just want to remove, again, any impressions in the hair. And if you don't know sort of like the, the art of making sure that you're not tugging and pulling on texture, it's very different from um, a tangle that you might get on straight hair, where it's, it's much harder to get through it. So again, for lack of uh, doing it in the incorrect way. Don't just rake through, you'll tear the hair. Always go to the bottom, from the bottom up and work your way back up to remove any tangles. And this is basic stuff that we know 
from cosmetology school, but I often feel like once we start getting out there, or even for a lot of us, if we are working on a medium of hair that we've never worked on before, we sort of forget all the rules that we learned in cosmetology school. So another thing I'm gonna show you is a different way that you could do this, right? So one of the great things that I actually like about this Dyson dryer is the fact that there is a pick attachment, right? So this is also, you see how, how wide those teeth are? This is also a great way to remove texture out of the hair. And this also saves you time. So one technique gives you a little bit more precision, but this will speed up the process and allow you to take larger quantities of hair. But it's going to boil down to what your preference is, right? If the hair is very, very tight, you might find that you need a little bit more tension to get to that frizzy area. So if you are a 4C and you really have tightly coiled hair, uh, you might need a bit more tension. And that tension is going to come from using a brush as opposed to using the pick attachment. So just a couple of tips, even in this preliminary stage of just removing the impressions out of the hair. Hey, Michelle, it's Katie from Alta. Can you hear me okay? I can hear you, Katie. I'm going to turn you up even louder. Oh, wonderful. Slow dryer. Okay, Katie, go TV for it. family, already 10 minutes in, and Michelle O'Connor is dropping that knowledge. Um, we did have some questions coming in as you're, you're getting her prepped. Um, what's the best moisturizer you would say to use for curly hair? Say that one more time, Katie. The best moisturizer that? to use moisture product for curly girls. Yeah. Curly so hair. one of the things that I say is like, this is like moisturizer for your skin. If you, if you yeah. kind of uh, make the equivalent. So no matter what you put on curly hair, you always need to have a leave in a moisturizer. So, so that is what I consider a moisturizer. One of my faves that I'm using right now is Miracle Creator. So okay. Uh, it, it has 20 different benefits from heat protecting to um, moisturizing to like just shine enhancing. And it is lightweight, so it's going to dissipate and disappear in the hair. It's not going to feel like you put anything heavy on it. And that will kind of be like your insurance on the hair. So no matter who, no matter what, no matter fine, medium or coarse, loose curl, tight curl, always have a leave-in conditioner before you start adding products on yeah. top of that so excellent advice and then there's a couple bit a couple more um a couple questions are pretty similar so w when you're looking at those beautiful braids that you created um what product is used to really support those and then in addition uh we had another viewer ask wax or hair gel um to make your braids last longer so what are your tips on products to really keep those braids popping yeah that's a good question i think um we always have to think about in terms of what kind of braids are we going to do are we going to do very sculpted very neat very um detailed braids or are we doing billowy loose braids a lot of times when you're seeing like these tighter sculpted cornrow type patterns of braids you're going to be using a braid gel or you're going to be using an edge tamer um, on this particular uh, mannequin lady, I use the edge, um, edge Gel Control from Pattern Beauty, and it smells heavenly. And what I like about it is it's supple. So it's never going to turn hard or like when I'm spending the time to apply that product to sort of like the scalp area to get, get allow myself to have some grip and also um, some neatness in my braiding. I don't have to worry about it getting hard and not allowing me to comb through that hair if I'm taking longer. Because yeah. one of the things that I mentioned earlier is when you're looking, especially you guys, symmetry, right? And I, I have to take my time to create braids that like, if I know that I, I need them to be centered, I am taking my comb and I am measuring it from her nose and parting back from that point. And then I'm going around and looking in the front and I'm measuring. So the longest part of this braid journey when you're looking to create something intricate is symmetry. And you need to have the time 
to create that. So having a product that allows you that buffer that will still stay supple, allow you to uh, repart, reshift is key. Amazing. Amazing. And then two blow dry questions came up. So when you were um, doing your smoothing, so what, what temperature did you have your dryer out and then, or dryer on? And then additionally, when you're blow drying, like a 4C curl pattern of hair, like how much heat is too hot? So what are some of your tips for blow drying? You guys, I love you. Those are phenomenal questions. So what I used on, on this mannequin today was medium velocity and medium heat. And your heat index is going to be contingent on the actual diameter, which is the texture of the hair. So to not confuse you, go back to cosmetology school. Remember when we learned what texture was and it texture was defined as the actual diameter of the hair strand, meaning it's either fine, medium, or coarse. So no matter what hair type you have, you could have a loose curl, which is a 3A, or you could have a very tight coil, which would be a 4C. Depending on the diameter of that strand is going to tell you how hot or how mild you need to be on the heat of your blow dryer. If I have a 4C lady and she has fine hair, think of her hair as being the equivalent to like silk. And so you wouldn't take an iron to iron clothes and put it on the highest temperature if you were ironing silk. So even though a blow dryer is not an iron, it still emits heat. And so I would turn my dryer down to low. I would try medium first, but I would even go more to low. And a little tip for you guys, if you don't realize this, you can actually stretch hair with no heat at all like uh, i remember when i understood that concept it's not the heat that's stretching the hair it's the tension and it's also the fact that you're taking the hair from that um, wet or damp straight uh, state and you're holding it in that straightened position so don't think that you have to blast the hair especially if you're just looking to stretch it to do braids or you're just stretching it to get more of a frizzy texture now when you're looking for very silky smooth hair you're going to have to go up a little bit more when we're talking about direct heat sources such as flat irons however when we're talking about blow dryers you can do a lot by lowering your temp temperature less is more and you'll err on the side of caution without creating damage amazing thanks michelle Absolutely. So I'm here with the wefts, right? Because another great thing about doing editorial hair in texture is we live in a world now where there's so many options for textured wefts and an editorial look would never be complete unless you added hair, hair, and more hair. It's, it's just someone's own natural hair is just not going to cut it. When we think of editorial hair, we think of larger than life. We think of aspirational and inspirational and something that makes you go, wow, look at that hair. So I have this textured hair extensions that um, are from a company called Pure, True and Pure Texture. Um, if you, Those of you guys that know of the Keela Riley, fantastic brand. And it has all the different kinds of textures on there. And so I just order what I need. And so for this, because I know my final product, I wanted it to be in that very, very frizzy, sort of um, not straight, not curly type of positioning. I, I ordered hair that would mirror that, right? So this is now me just taking a head form, right? Like a, like a, a bustle, almost like what you see when designers take and they kind of um, uh, use a dress form and they go and they pin and they talk and they're, you know, they make a dress off of it. So this is the equivalent in our world, right? So I know that I just need a blank canvas and I'm just T pinning it and I'm going to go in and do the same thing to the hair extension so that I can mirror the pattern of hair that I just created, right? So all I'm doing real easy breezy, real quick, is just going with my dryer. You see this hair is looking very similar to what's on the mannequin. And I'm just removing any little bends. And, you know, we put our hair extensions, sometimes they're in a bag and they get bends and folds. So I'm just going again with some medium heat and I'm just stretching that hair out a little bit. 
And as you can see, it's really long. So I'm going for something that's pretty dramatic, pretty impactful. And again, easy breezy, these are coming on clips. So you, you don't have to worry about, you know, if you're not very experienced with hair extensions, you don't have to worry about like, oh, how do I put that on? And, you know, stick with me, kid. I'll show you some things. So um, right now I'm going to just sort of remove these braids out of the way because I'm going to kind of combine them. So I'm going to, again, use the edge gel. So again, one of the reasons why edge gel is a choice is because what you don't want to do with texture or hair patterns is re-wet it, right? Because when you re-wet it, what happens? When you re-wet the hair, it'll go back and it'll revert to its very natural state, right? So I'm not looking for the hair to revert. I'm just looking for this hair to be slick and sleek. And so I am just going to pull up, for this I'll just pull up her sides, right? So I'm positioning it and I'm going in with one of these Wyas Park alligator clips that have a lot of tension. So your tools matter, right? So we have a lot of tension. You see how sleek that held it back? And I'm just going to repeat and do the same thing on the other side. Can't see me, but I'm doing the same exact thing on this side so that I can actually work. If I turn it to you guys, then I won't be able to come on that side. So just a repeat, just a dupe. And again, sure. with oh, sorry. Yes. As you're doing that, Michelle, um, Dina had a question <clears throat> going with as creating style with a client's natural texture. Um, would you use their natural texture to create the style or do you always prep it with a blow dry? When oh, you're no. Oh, no. Sky is the limit, you guys. Sky is the limit. So this just happens to be my vision for today. You could very easily take curly hair and use that. You, There's no hard and fast rule that says you must stretch the hair for it to be editorial. Definitely not. It is about what you envision. So even if you are taking someone's natural hair and not stretching it and not making it frizzy, it can still look very editorial. Absolutely. Um, and what that would entail is thinking about what you want to think, how you want to think when you are determining how am I going to do something on curly hair that's editorial? The biggest tip that I could give you on that is to make sure that you are thinking about the silhouette. And why I say think about the silhouette is because curly hair has so much going on in the interior. See all these bumps and ridges? Your silhouette is what is going to outline the shape. That is what the camera is going to pick up and look for. You ever think about someone who might be very photogenic? So the, the meaning of someone being photogenic is that the camera is picking up angles. Like, do you have, you know, a uh, angular nose, che uh, jawline, cheekbones, like eye bones? Do you have a uh, bone structure that allows the camera to sort of just zone in and pick that up? So it's very similar to a silhouette where everything in the interior might seem a little, um, you know, uh, soft. However, what shape do you want? Do you want a triangular shape, uh, upside down triangle? Do you want a rectangle? Do you want the hair to be circular? So if it's circular, you could have many different things happening within that circle. But when you pan out and you look at the hairstyle, even though it's textured, you can still say, that's a circle, that's a triangle, or that's a pyramid. So just a couple things to think about. So no, not at all, ne definitely. There's no one rule for how texture needs to look when it is styled either in the salon or when it is styled editorially. It really is about just determining what accents, what things you'd like to see live in that texture. Do you want to have no braiding? Do you want to have a very deep side part? 
do you want more hair to be sitting on one side than the other? Do you want it to be expanding in like a pyramid shape? So these are a couple of the things to think about. Um, old trick, I like to use, <laughs> these are regular office rubber bands. I know that people use different things. Um, so there's, there's three different ways that I've seen people do this. If you're by yourself, obviously you can always use like a bungee, right? But I also know that when people are really getting into that art of like a sleek ponytail, they often use a stretchy thread. And, but sometimes I feel like if you don't have someone to help you, this is always going to be my go-to for when I'm trying to get it done and I need something that grips really well. So one thing I'm gonna point out to you guys is how small that bobby pin is though. It's like a miniature, right? So. I have found that when I just use the traditional bobby pins and I was doing any type of pony, that it would stick through the hair and I had nowhere to hide it. And then I realized, duh, just put a mini on there and then it's completely hidden. I also have this around two rubber bands as insurance, just in case uh, a hair elastic that I can just unravel or a rubber band that I can just unravel is always going to be better than a hair elastic that I sort of wrapped around the hair and tried to remove, especially on texture, because it's like gripping, it's not coming out. You have all of this texture in it and it's just grabbing and tangling and knotting. So I have found that anything that I can wrap around and unwrap is always going to be my best bet. So after I've gone in and created that very sleek pony, I'll go in with a little edge tamer brush. Always need to have an edge tamer brush. Any editorial kit or styling kit has to have an edge tamer, regardless of whether I'm creating detail on the hairline or creating baby hairs or not. I like to be able to work minutely in these small little spaces. Detail is everything, right? Because I know I'm working with a substance that can live in a space that's very soft and undefined, there has to be something that also draws your eye in. And so it's going to be important to have neatness in the areas that aren't billowy, that aren't, you know, stretched uh, and soft. So I'm just paying attention to that extra little detail. And so having a, a, a small little brush, it doesn't even have to be an edge tamer, perfect professional type of brush, you guys. A lot of us for many years used toothbrushes, okay? So just an, uh, another little tip for you. This is um, Shaper that I'm using. Um, so it's going to give me some nice shine and it's also going to reinforce what I created. So now I'm going to go in with a couple of the clip-on pieces right? So if I take her ponytail, just this ponytail, and I decide that I want to use the clip-on pieces, all I have to do is take this and braid it, right? Because I'm going to need an anchor. If I just left her hair out, I wouldn't have that anchor to hang the clip-on hair extensions on. So just a three strand braid and put a rubber band on the ends. Anything else going on? Yeah, Maybe. we have a few things. I didn't want to interrupt your talk to me. I'm beautiful I'm work. So you're on multitasking. So this guy I think we know his name is Ammon Carver. He had a question <laughs> and then Brandy also, and it's it's kind of like a similar Ulta question. So what what do you what are you loving about being on the Ulta Beauty Pro team? And what do you like about Ulta Beauty in general? Yeah, I love that it feels fresh. I love that it feels futuristic and modern. I love that it feels like regardless of being in the midst of a hard time for all of us, when you go inside an Ulta store, there is still like this bright happy feeling. If there's one thing that you can attest to that we all experienced during the pandemic, it was about the art of self-care. Like we all got down and dirty. We were masking in and deep conditioning and doing all these things that allowed us to feel good about ourselves. And I feel like that is extended when you walk into an Ulta store. It's bright, it's sunny. 
everything your heart's desire is in there. It is the adult version of a candy store. And so just to be able to go in there, like I never come out of there empty handed, even if I intend to come out of there <laughs> empty handed, like I'm like, oh, I need Epsom salt. Yes, because I'm going to take a bath and I'm going to pour some violet and, um, you know, chamomile infused Epsom salt. And so like, as far as how I feel being a part of it, I, I, I'm most excited to be a part of it because I walked into a powerhouse team. And um, for a very long time, you guys uh, know that I, I love to surround myself with immense, immensely, immensely talented people. And to see that it's like really everybody, everything's covered. You've got like the with David, like the social media, like master, you've got Anna who's got like this amazing, uh, like legacy of what he's done in beauty with the professional space, with Lonza, with having a background from Matrix. Like I've known him for years. Also, Nick, I mean, I, Nick and I go way back. I mean, you have Keila Riley, you have Sonia Dove. Like these are people, Danielle Kiesling, uh, Sean, these are all people that I have thought of as iconic and I get to be around them and pick their brains and they pick my brains. And it is, it is a, a meeting of the minds and we get to pour into our educators and our design team and as much as we are teaching them, they are also teaching us. And Ulta Beauty is leading the charge on texture. And I am happy to be on that train. Yep. And you've been an amazing addition to supporting the education team. I know that for sure. We do have, as you're working on the next piece of, um, of your look, Tina had a question. She, oh, and I can relate to this. She has fine curly hair that always looks frizzy. What can I do to get healthy looking curls? Okay, so one of the things that Tina might want to do is just reevaluate where her hair is sitting, where her length is, because sometimes when the hair is fine and it's curly, um, it's too long for us to have it at the length that we might want it. And so sometimes when we go to try to create definition and expand it, because it looks thin, where it's trying to expand it and then it ends up looking frizzy. So that's the first thing, evaluate where your length is sitting because we all have like an optimal length. Some of us can't have curls that are down to our waist. Some of us, the best length for our curls might be right at shoulder length or right at chest length. So think about that first because you wanna maximize where your hair looks the fullest. And once you maximize where your hair looks the fullest, then you wanna go in and really spend time defining those curls when it's in its wet state. Because if you spend the time really defining your curls, section by section, going in and doing techniques like, you know, raking, shingling, finger coiling, and you spend the time, one, you're going to have that perimeter that's going to have girth and it's going to have weight to it. And then two, you can now then fluff your hair out and it'll be balanced. So you'll get rid of that, that frizzy, diffused, skinny look. And that's the biggest thing that I could say, just go ahead and reevaluate where your length is sitting, especially when the hair is fine. Because when you close that gap a little bit, that's the game changer. Amazing. Thanks, Michelle. Yeah. So what I'm doing right now is I'm wrapping these clip-on extensions right around the braid, like I told you guys. So I just took one that had three prongs and I'm working my way up, just wrapping it around. And so what that is gonna give me is an expanded and extended version of this hair. So literally it's a clip-on that I use the braid as an anchor and I'm just gonna continue to wrap around until I meet the clothes, right? So here it is, I'm creating this long ponytail, right? So obviously I'm gonna to have to go in and do some clip-ins in the section behind it, but I'm just gonna to continue to build on this ponytail before I get into this area because I really want to create this shape that if she were a human being would sit at her waist and it would almost look like a pyramid. And that's what I was talking about earlier when I said, think about your shapes, think about your silhouettes, everything, no matter what hair you're doing, no matter what texture always has a shape. We learned that in haircutting. We learned that even in color. So it's also applicable to texture.
What else? Did I answer everything, Katie? Yeah, I think Did we're in great shape. Yeah, no, you are doing amazing. We are in great shape. Um, I think as, you know, when we talk about, you know, as far as with what got you in? I have a question and I know we've kind of talked about this a little bit, but like what got you into editorial styling? I mean, you're a five time Naha winner. You obviously have some amazing skills and what inspired you to to get going into this editorial space and and maybe hairdressing in general? That's a big question. Yeah. <laughs> and I think um, I always want to make sure that I pay like the ultimate respect to hairdressers that decide to make a career out of behind the chair because there's nothing, nothing ever wrong with that. I was behind the chair for probably about 10 years before I got into education and I loved my clients. I loved everything about working on clients. And I think as you start to develop and go down the road, uh, career pathing is very important to you and you start to look for other things in the industry that you could be a part of. And so that's that's also one of the beautiful things about Ulta is that there's career pathing. So in looking for career pathing, I was like, what else, you know, what other mediums can I do? Like is, you know, can I be a platform artist? Can I do editorial? I was a young girl who loved to look at fashion magazines. Like, I don't know if you remember Sex in the City when the character uh, Carrie, uh, Sarah Jessica Parker says that um, when she was young and starving in New York, she bought Vogue because it yep. fed her more. <laughs> uh, that's me. I felt like as a young girl, I would always analyze like what the outfits were, what the makeup was, what the hair was and how the picture made me feel. And like, I would be inspired by looking at these women. And so when I got the opportunity to be a part of uh, creating beauty, beauty or, or contributing to creating the beauty in women, whether they're models or whether they are, you know, real women in, in, with real lives and, and, and um, what they would consider not as glamorous, but everybody's life is glamorous. Um, I, I just, I love taking things and pushing the envelope. I'm an envelope pusher. Like I hate boxes. I love when someone says you can't do that. I love when, um, I love to, create something or try to think hard about something that I haven't seen before. So if, if there's one common thread that I could say, it's really just about pushing myself because anything that you do editorially, believe it or not, and here's where I connect the dots for you. Anything you do editorially in many degrees of that, all of those techniques are applicable to the salon, whether it's your eye for detail, whether it's how neat you are, whether it's being able to understand what the camera picks up, whether it is about sort of expanding your medium for textured hair. What about, you know, if it's about like other techniques that you're learning where you're adding hair extensions or taking them away. I mean, we live in a world now where women want what the celebrities want. So there was a time when, you know, something might have been like outrageous. And now that no longer exists, you might see Beyonce in something or Zendaya or any one of these celebrities uh, and mainstream women want to wear these looks as well. So when we think of the editorial space, it, we have to push the envelope even more now because the regular everyday working women want to stand out. And I, I think that's probably because of social media and we're all trying to sort of be unique and different and stand out. And hopefully that answers that question. I love that. Yeah. And, and really it ties into, um, we have Jess who's starting, um, she's going to start or going to go to cosmetology school this semester. And then we have Maria who just finished ours and taking the um, last test tomorrow. What pieces of advice do you have? Just maybe a couple that for, st for those starting out in this, in this industry. It's you guys, for those of you starting out in this industry, it really is going to be up to you. Like when you think about, I'm going to give you one word and that word is integrity how you do one thing is how you're going to do everything, right? So if you are in the salon and you're learning, make your mistakes. That's okay. Don't be afraid to make those mistakes, but make sure that you own up to them. Make sure that you fix them. You know, little experience such as 
you know, coloring someone's hair. And if you notice that there was a bleed, do you let that, and, and maybe the bleed's sitting in the back and you're saying she's never going to know before. <laughs> it makes me think of that, um, that, that Instagram, um, thing that says who's you're not going to know. They're not going to know who's going to know, you know, you know, and that is your signature. That is how you feel about your level of work that you're doing. And trust me, your client is going to love you. If you say to them, look, there's, there's an area in the back that, um, I would like to fix. And so I just noticed it's, you know, they'd rather you take that initiative than them going home and opening their hair up in their, their two way mirror and finding it that you did it. So own up to the things that you were doing and start building those integrity muscles because those integrity muscles show up in the place of fixing your mistakes, uh, showing up on time, um, you know, being humble, uh, working when it's not always some an opportunity where you're going to get paid. Sometimes there has to be moments where you're just there for the experience and for the learning and to pay dues. And so um, these are all the things that I could tell you, just work hard, show up first, leave last, um, you know, be a sponge. Don't just take, you know, obviously we all kind of fall into certain categories where we might just fall in love with a certain thing, whether that's color or texture or color and texture or cutting and, but learn all of it, learn all of it and learn all of it as much as you can. And if you find yourself five or 10 years or 20 years down the road, knowing that there's an area of deficiency, go back and start taking classes in that area. Amen, Miss Michelle. <laughs> That's so, awesome. So all I'm doing right now is like I promised you, um, I'm going in with the same hair extensions, which ideally I would have gone in and stretched these as well. However, I want to make sure that I can at least show you this, this technique before I run out of time. And so I'm just placing them in here and then I can always go in and stretch them while they're in the hair. The only thing about that is you have to make sure that you're not pulling them out because that could very happen. You know, that could happen very well. Um, where you're, you know, having some tension on the hair and tugging and then your hair extensions get pulled out. So um, ideally do it first, like I showed you on the, the head form. And you want to just make sure that you have enough hair at the end so that everything is concealed. And you're going to see where I actually take my hand and I'm holding the top because I'm going to be stretching through all of these extensions. And I just want to make sure that I don't pop them out. And speaking of your extensions, we had Natalie asking um, a little bit earlier, what are your favorite extensions for really curly hair for professional use? I know you, I think you said hair you wear is what you're using today, right? What I'm using today is, um, these are true and pure. Oh, I'm textured. sorry. True and pure. True and pure. These, these are for textured hair. Um, I also, um, I love Bellamy um, as well. Um, those are the two main ones. And I know that we also, a lot of us, sometimes when we're in New York, we, we utilize a store called Helena's, um, which is a wig shop. Um, very pricey. I would say don't spend too much money when you're just practicing, you know, as you start to get more well-versed, um, then you can, you know, spend, you know, uh, more money and you can just save the hair extensions and save the hair pieces, wash it, keep it clean and keep it, start keeping it in your kit. But yeah, these texture hair extensions are um, from True and Pure. Yep, True and Pure. Tequila Riley, love it. Yes. So once I've gotten through sort of like the, the parts that might create too much tension, then you can sort of let go, right? So one one dragged out exactly see so this is what happens if you um you don't hold that crown area and a lot of us too sometimes we'll take these uh clip and hair extensions and we'll back comb you know i find that it just depends on how much grip the hair has so if you find that you really need those to stay in longer like say you are just trying to show a client how to use um you know, some fun hair extensions, you can teach her uh, or him to go in and just do a little bit of back combing at the root for some, you know, longevity and 
security. Um, but if you're doing something that is for a shoot, I find that you, you, you may not need to go in and do all of that extra um, back combing, especially when you're working on hair that is already textured. It's going to have like a natural built-in sort of grip. And um, so there you have this hair that's transformed. And one of the things that I would do is go in, I might go in with like clippers. I would actually keep adding hair because I like that. I love the density from here to here. I want to see a definitive uh, sort of shape on the bottom as well. We know that when the hair gets longer, it starts to get more wispy. So I would continue to add hair into this, pull down this ponytail, right? Of course, I'm going to take a strip, right? Because we never want to have like our hair elastic be exposed. So that's just a given. And that's something that if you're doing any type of ponytails in the salon that Again, it's a given. Conceal, that's the difference between, you know, someone doing it themselves and you doing it in the salon professionally. So I'm just wrapping this around multiple times. It's so long that I could go in and I could stick a small, one of the same small bobby pins just to secure it. But it actually has a lot of staying power because it is so um it is so long and it wrapped around so many times right so again it's detail right so i'm going to share something with you see how i see a little bit of that rubber band there so that would be an indicator to me i don't want to see that right so that would be a little indicator that i would go in again with one of these small bobby pins and just tuck it out of sight right so that integrity thing where it's like Someone might say, oh, who cares about that? You don't even see it. I see it and I'm striving for perfection. We may not get to perfect, but I'm, you can strive for it. So again, just to reiterate, I would go in with even more and I would pack this even more. And then I might take like in the um, inspiration image that's on the flyer, take some clippers and just go in directly right into the perimeter and create this perfect, precise, shape. And again, if we're looking for, once I continue to build this with even more hair, I'm going to get a lot of expansion. And so if you want even more expansion, this is where a product like Miss Mess, where you just sort of spraying it in the hair to give it more of a lifted organic grit that hair has like a few days in. So so that will continue to get built. And then what I would do to take it to the next level is I would go in with, I wouldn't be Michelle if I did not have some type of trinket or embellishment, like that is my jam. And so I'm always having some kind. So these are like little rings, right? Not literal rings that you put on your finger, but like jewelry rings, right? So I would just take that and just, I just opened it. It comes in a circle with like an opening and I would just insert that underneath the braid, right? Almost like you would if you were inserting an earring and you can just move it back and that ring just hangs off of the braid and so what i would do there we go what i would do is do a couple of these right on these two straight braids that are going back i wouldn't do this is detailed enough so i would just have a couple rings on these and that would create my beautiful accent and focal point, I wouldn't make a new focal point because the braids are there for you to draw you in, right? So I don't need to create anything on the sides because that becomes too much and less is always going to be more. And so I've got this beautiful 
African inspired, right? Cornrow pattern. And then now I'm adorning it. We know that um, embellishments have been the thing for like a while and I don't see them slowing down. So there, I'll just add it too. And I'll continue to just add a few more behind it. And speaking and of, as you're doing those, um, Natalie, she lives in Norway, but she wondered if you had any suggestions for good online shops for styling gear to, to really do up your styles as far as your rings or any kind of other embellishments to put in the hair. Um, wow. Like I actually, some time ago, I went through um, a company out of Australia and um, they have, I just fell in love with um, these beads. They're called Kila, K Kayla, Kila. And um, I happened to just collect a few of them for use at a later date. Um, and they kind of look like this, oh, very right? Cool. So they're beads that open, which oh, I really oh. love because a lot of the beads that you can buy locally um, they don't open, so you have to slide them. And this changes how I can work with beads because I can just put this on on top of something without yep. a type of concern. So that's one resource. Um, another resource is going to be <laughs> um, like your, even like your Amazons, you know, like for little, small, little trinkets. And then also like, I've gotten a, a ton of things inside Ulta as well. Like I've gotten really cool bobby pins, really cool um, hair clips. And so like, um, you can go online, right, Katie? They can go online, Ulta.com. I know um, within the US, yep, yep. <clears throat> Ulta.com would have that. Um, no, that's perfect. And then- um, so, and then Jess was just asking, would you, when you're looking at determining what jewelry to use to, um, add to the hair, would you match the jewelry with skin, hair, tone, and color? Like for example, gold with warmer skin tone. How do you make those, those styling decisions as you're adding accessories to the hair? Wow. This is from Jeff. That's a good question. Um, I think, uh, like I chose gold for her because her hair is brown. Yes, her skin is like a creamy brown. Um, I think I would look at wardrobe. I would think I would um, look at anything else that she might be wearing because even if it's a top, if there's a belt, what is the color on the buckle? Um, it, does she have earrings? Like I think all of those things would be complimentary. And then um, I, I, you know, really jewels and accessories, I tend to mostly keep it in the rose golds, golds, um, and silver. And so I think generally speaking, you really just have that three, three color sort of window to play around with on occasion. There's other trinkets that have like, um, like they're colorful, like, um, and if that is, then in that case, I probably would be matching like a wardrobe. Um, like I remember putting some type of beads on a model at a show and she was in like pink and um, I put like pink beads and so, and they were wooden and they were big. And so like, sometimes it's the wardrobe, sometimes, you know, do you want the accessories to overpower the hair? Do you want them to just be a shiny little twinkling accent, yeah. you know? And that's going to determine do you want them to be big? Do you want them to be skinny and delicate? It's just like jewelry. You know, yeah. some women like bold, chunky rings and necklaces and jewelry, and some women like delicate, very skinny, thin pieces. So it's really going to be partly your aesthetic, what yeah. you like, and what you envision for um, the final outcome. I love that. So many great things to consider. Thanks, Here Michelle. I think we're caught up on the questions here. Yeah. yeah. So, you guys, um, that's all for today. <laughs> I feel like I've even gone over, but I'm going to continue to build this out, and um, you guys will be able to see what the finished look is. But she's 90% of the way there. And um, thank you for joining me today. If you want to see more, don't forget to get to the BTC show. I'll be there along with my family, the Ulta Beauty Pro team. Um, 
and we will be rocking and rolling on the stage. So if you want to see more editorial tips, uh, join me there. And um, for those of you that um, want to understand and know more about Ulta, uh, it's, again, it's really, really a great place for, for stylists to explore as part of what we talked about career options and career pathing. You know, there's not many places that offer 70% commission and, you know, paid medical, dental, like vacation. So definitely if you guys are out there and you're starting in your career or you're currently in your career and you're just looking to have a really great home, Ulta Beauty is someplace you want to consider. Thanks, Michelle. That was amazing. Thanks, BTC.